Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead and this time we're looking at the brand new Audi A8. So it's been given a bit of a bit of a facelift for 2022 most notably with that front grille and a lot of the underlying technology remains the same. Uh, we reviewed the Audi S8 last year and I absolutely loved that car, thought it was fantastic. So I was quite excited to see what a normal version of the A8 does. So model tested here is the A8L, so long wheelbase, 13 centimetres longer than the standard A8 and this is the hybrid version so it's the 60 TFSIE. So it works with a 3 litre V6 engine and a 17.9 kilowatt hour battery. So it's basically a McLaren Altura. That's where those comparisons end. But when you get everything working in sync, uh, you get 462 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque, and it will do not 62 miles an hour in just 4.9 seconds, which isn't bad for a car weighing 2.5 tons. Uh, getting to some of the particulars, it's a big car, 2.13 meters wide, 5.3 meters long. It's got a footprint on the road that's slightly bigger than the Rolls-Royce Cullinan that we tested a couple of videos ago. So it's not small, but you do get a lot of opulence with it. Um, we'll dive in then, we'll take a closer look round. So it comes in florette silver. Uh, that's one of the standard colors offered. Um, you get the chrome effect around here. If you go up to the black pack, that all comes out blacked out. Um, so this model uh, as tested here costs 118,000 um, pounds. Is got a few peculiarities because it was a, a press launch edition. You can get the Vorsprung A8 long wheelbase for £116,000. That basically comes fully loaded and the A8 long wheelbase without any of the optional extras starts from £90,000. Um, but if we come around to the side, uh, the model tested here is fitted with the 20 inch 20 spoke wheels. I think they look fantastic on here. Really suit the profile of the car. Um, you can get anything from 18s to 21s on there. So, you know, plenty of options to consider there. And you get an idea as you come down the side here just how long this car is we'll have a look at the back in a minute and um, you know it's got the rear comfort pack on it this car as well so yeah definitely a nice car to be driven around in um you do the petrol on this side the charging port is on the other side around there another upgrade here is the oled rear tail lights um you know they're really really good uh, they've got distance control on them so if someone's driving a little bit closer to you at night they become dimmer if someone's further away they become a bit brighter um, we want to have a quick look in the boot it being a hybrid obviously it's got some batteries to pack under here which nabs a bit of boot space off you actually so this has 390 litres of boot space whereas a non-hybrid version of the A8 has 510 another consideration of course is your charging bag it's not unsubstantial either there's a, there's a lot of cabling goes in there so you've got to lug that round with you as well if you want to keep the car topped up um, Get a bit of the boring stuff out of the way it being hybrids the bit rate comes down to 12 percent 40 percent on the non-hybrid version so if you're getting it as a company car or you're running it on a fleet this definitely comes into its own in that sort of consideration uh, i've just done a family trip down to devon and back in it on the way down there 219 miles got 40 mpg on the nose as well which is pretty good for a car of this size but anyway that's enough about bit rates and that sort of stuff let's see what it's like inside so this being the long wheelbase is very much a car to be driven in and as you can see I mean there's just so much legroom in here and so much headroom and these seats are super adjustable as well so you get the full-on recline function on these so you can really bed into your journey. Now another function um, as we come up to the centre console here you get full control over the dials in the back so if I want to move the front passenger seat out of the way, just hold this down and I can create yet more legroom for myself as well which is really nice. Um, so these comes as part of the rear comfort pack which is a £3,000 optional extra that brings these 10 inch HD TVs and much of the recline and lumbar support function in the seats as well and you get these LED matrix reading lights as well which are a nice touch to have um, so yeah you can control everything back here and also if you want a bit of privacy you can just close all the blinds um, and yeah because this car is just so smooth you can just really recline into your journey and tell your driver to take you home. It's all well and good being driven around in your Audi A8 long wheelbase, but what's it like for the driver? Very nice. Um, it's classically Audi in here. Love the virtual MMI cockpit. I really like the two screen setup as well. Um, some people have said they find it a bit distracting when you're on the move, which I can sympathise with, but you do get the haptic feedback from the buttons. I've generally got on very well with it. Um, while we're on this menu down here, it being the hybrid, you can choose between all electric driving. Um, you get about 32 miles all electric range, I think, realistically, and you get auto hybrid as well. So you punch in where you're going on the sat nav and it will work out the most efficient use of the battery based upon the terrain and all that sort of clever stuff um, it does work astonishingly well actually 
and obviously it's got the regenerative braking and all that sort of business as well. Um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay uh, wireless connectivity there. Um, it's got other features as well, like it will park itself and you get the 3D camera, surround sound camera on here as well. And um, the good thing about this is it actually displays an A8 long wheelbase as well. So you get the A8L logo in there, which I think is pretty cool. And so, yeah, it's useful for a car that's this big that it will give you a bit of assistance with the parking. Um, you get air conditioned and heated seats, which is great. I really, really like having air conditioned seats, get a bit of a sweaty back on the longer journeys. Um, and it also has the massage functionality as well. So you can really just choose what you want from the several settings in here and have a nice Nice soothing massage as you drive along another nice touch to have um, these armrests are adjustable as well to whatever height you want there's loads of adjustability in these seats as well steering is adjusted electronically I mean it's yeah there's plenty of adjustability you will find the perfect driving angle on this um, just get across to the practicalities um, so you get this really nice soft leather finishing on the seats super comfortable um, come across a bit of storage space so in the door here you get this little cubby hole there which you can put stuff in um, you get a door bin down there and you get the glove box, which is cool. Uh, you'll notice in there there's a DVD player. So we showed the screens in the back. So you can either sit there and watch a DVD or it's got an HDMI cable in there as well. So you can plug in a games console. Um, you can get Netflix up and running, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, you know, plenty of entertainment options. Otherwise, everything's up here. It's got the upgraded Bang & Olufsen 3D premium audio. It is superb in this car. Um, I've experienced it in other Audis. I think there's just something about the shape of this car. It seems to come together really, really well. Um, just to compare it to a couple of other this quickly not quite as good as the rolls-royce bespoke audio that we experienced in the cullinan or the mark levinson audio system from the lexus lc 500 but it's comfortably third top three in there which is which is really good and it's an excellent excellent system well worth considering if you like listening to music while you're driving um come across to the driving position itself so we've got a head-up display and um, we reviewed the audi q4 e-tron sportback last year that had the next generation augmented reality head-up display it was really really good they've not fitted that to this i'm not sure why because they've got the technology well they had the technology last year it seems odd that they wouldn't have fitted it to the 2022 model but i mean it's still really good i mean it gives you all the information very clearly speed limit how fast you're going and that's incredibly useful in a car like this because it's so whisper quiet when you're going along at motorway speeds it can be useful to just have a little reminder of just how fast you are going there um got a cruise control down here it's got paddles for the gears um i don't mind them being so apologetic in the a8 because it's not a car that insists upon you using them so often um as with audi 110 lane keep assist off it's this button on the end of the stalk there worth keeping on the motorway works really well with the adaptive cruise control but on single lane roads and you're trying to overtake cyclists and then the steering wheel starts wrestling with you it can be a little bit irritating so just one press of that to turn it off nice and easy um mmi cockpit fantastic loads of visuals in here uh, come in have the map on there you can change your view um yeah really easy to use it's great um really really like it and um your air conditioning all of this is done on touch screens across here as well um all in all, yeah, everything's electrically adjustable. Steering wheel column as well, electrically adjustable. Uh, everything's just so easy to use in here. It's really comfortable. Uh, yeah, did a long drive back from Devon on Thursday evening in it. Sitting in here for three hours, 20 minutes. It's just an absolute breeze. It's a really, really exceptional uh, space to be in for that sort of journey. But talking about the driving, it's probably time we take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive. So what's the Audi A8L like to drive? Well, we're starting off in electric mode and as you can hear, it is supremely quiet in here, but if you do want to raise the pace a little bit, we go into the driver select menu, select dynamic, and that V6 just comes to life with a nice thrum. I mean, it's never too audible, but it does add a real, you know, real surge to the car. You notice it just about here. It kicking through there um, so yeah as I mentioned when the battery and the engine are working in tandem there's 462 horsepower available and 700 newton meters of torque 0 to 62 4.9 seconds so it's not slow so I'll keep it in dynamic for a bit because we're on a B road at the moment which is not really the natural habitat of a car like this but I've got to say I mean it surprises and how well it handles everything um, you get the adaptive air suspension as standard across the A8 range so you know it really does alter its characteristics depending upon what driving mode you are in and um, you leave it in comfort and efficiency it will try to use up as much of the battery power as possible to save on the petrol but other than that when you do give it a bit of a stamp on that right foot it does 
burst into life quite nicely. Um, it's never a fussy car at all, this. It's always supremely comfortable, supremely relaxed. I'm just going to flick it back through into comfort again now and everything just quietens down. The suspension noticeably softens and it just wafts along. And you can imagine that this, on an autobahn, you could be doing flat out 180 mile an hour top speed and it will, <laughs> will just sail along. You wouldn't really notice you were moving. Um, especially if you're sitting in the back, you could be sitting here driving, passengers asleep in the back doing 180 and no one would notice. Um, yeah, it's a really, really impressive car to drive in that sort of setting. So it absolutely nails its brief in that regard. Um, yeah, you get the double glazing here as well. So it's not really interrupted by road noise or anything like that. It's just a lovely, relaxed place to be. Um, it's got a lot of driver assistance aids, which can be a little bit irritating. So we're coming up to a junction now and it started braking for me way back there. And it's just, and it's braking now, I'm not doing anything with it. And it starts to do the braking for you, which can be a little bit annoying. Like if you're trying to close gaps on the motorway and that sort of thing, it just won't let you. Um, which I suppose, you know, from a safety perspective, I can absolutely see why they've done it, but it's just a bit irritating. So come on, just let us, let us get on with things here. And yeah, the lane keep assist, as I mentioned, can be a little bit funny, but that bit's easy to turn off. I haven't worked out how to turn off the auto braking system on it. Um, but the adaptive cruise control works very well. Uh, that's great on the motorway. It does all the steering on the lanes for you. Yeah, it's really, again, super easy to use. Um, not really any major drawbacks on it. Okay, stick it in dynamic, send it down a B road, it doesn't need suddenly turn into a hot hatch. Um, it's not as impressive as the S8 in that setting, which again, I think you'd expect. Um, this is far more relaxed. And yeah, I can see the hybrid does come into its own on this driving experience. Like we've been on electric for a while now and it's just, there's plenty of power there. It'll go up to 83 miles an hour on electric only as well. So there's enough of a shove that you get 122 brake horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque from battery power alone. So there's enough there to keep you moving along. Um, it's actually a very good hybrid system as well. So one of my complaints with other hybrids have been that it will start going on battery, then all of a sudden realize, oh God, we need the engine power as well. And you put your foot down and it just suddenly bursts into life at 2000 RPM. This is a bit more refined than that. It's not as good as a Polestar 1. That's definitely the best hybrid I've driven, um, but this is definitely second best. It's actually very good. You don't really notice the petrol engine kicking in. It's very subtle. It's only when you really stamp on it that you get that sudden roar from it. Um, otherwise, it just, just subtly introduces itself. You see the rev, revs flick up to 2000 and away you go. So you can see the sort of future direction of these cars. I think Audi have said they want their whole range to be electrified by 2025. This is just so well set up for electric driving. I mean, it's gonna be a really, really good EV, this. Um, these sorts of cars and SUVs, in my opinion, are well suited to electrification just because they're designed to be smooth, comfortable, relaxed, and that's what electrification delivers. And it's just so quiet and refined. Can't ever really get over just how quiet it is in here. It's astonishing. Um, so Audi have said that they anticipate the A8 and the A8L accounting for 0.3% of their UK sales and the S8 to account for 0.1% of UK sales. So they're not anticipating seeing too many of them on the road. Um, I guess it is going up against the BMW 7 Series and the well-established Mercedes S-Class. Um, I mean, it holds its own pretty well, I think, in that in those in that company. It's very subtle. Um, it's not a car that's going to encourage people to stop and gawp at it, and I quite like that about it. I think that's um, I think that's a good way of having these sort of cars. I don't think they should be ostentatious or too flashy or in your face, and this definitely isn't. Um, as I mentioned, we drove down to Devon. It wasn't ideal on the tight single track farmer lanes of there, which you might expect of a car this size, but on the motorway driving, it was just so good. So whilst you might not see too many of them on the road, the ones you do see, you can rest assured that the occupants are driving around in serene comfort. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing. Uh, we've got loads of videos on the channel and we've got loads more coming up as well throughout the rest of the year and beyond. So yeah, please hit that subscribe button and it'd be great to see you again soon. Thanks.